Hey, what's happening, gang? Bobby Spellman here for another episode of... In this video, I want to talk about the art of jazz tonguing on trumpet. Now, jazz music brings with it three particular challenges that are not uh, as common in, let's say, classical music, and they are as follows. Number one, you have to deal with the challenges of having to often play long, fast lines with a certain kind of rhythmic approach. Uh, this will require you to have to use a particular style of tonguing that alternates between using the valves to separate the notes and using your tongue to create clear articulations. Now the other one is swing. The swing feel creates a particular challenge unto itself because you're putting emphasis on the offbeats and it's not always easy to just single tongue lines. Sometimes you want to use a slightly different technique in order to bring out those varying rhythmic phrases. And the third challenge that jazz music faces, uh, poses to us as trumpet players is that we are expected to really bring out our individual quality as artists. You want to try to find your individual voice on the instrument and the way that one chooses to articulate has a lot to do with one's individual personal sound. Think, for example, about the difference between the sound of Miles Davis and Clifford Brown and Kenny Dorham and Freddie Hubbard. All of them may have very starkly different approaches to articulation. Uh, there's certainly some overlap, but within just a couple of notes, you would be able to easily identify that individual musician's personal sound, and one big part of that while playing trumpet is the ability to articulate in a particular kind of way. So let's talk a little bit about some of the techniques that you might use in order to jazz tongue on trumpet. The term jazz tonguing refers to the technique of alternating between single tonguing and slurring between the notes in order to emphasize the offbeats of a particular phrase and be able to articulate a fairly long or fast phrase of music without it sounding too choppy or too legato. So on the one hand, it would be easy just to use the valves exclusively and not to articulate at all in order to play certain lines. That might sound something like this. Now you're going to get all the notes in like that, but you're not really creating a very compelling rhythmic approach to the way that the line is operating. Alternatively, you could single tongue everything, and it might sound something like this. All right, in that example, you can see that I'm able to create a little bit more of an aggressive articulation, but it's at the expense of the smooth flowing approach that I would usually want to use if I'm playing a tune and swing or any kind of an eighth note line in jazz music. All right, so how do we get around this? Well, the big trick to jazz tonguing is to be able to comfortably alternate between using the single tongue and using the valves to separate the notes. In the beginning of any phrase, you want to articulate clearly with the single tongue, ta. But after that, the goal is to tongue on the offbeats and slur on the downbeats. So, if I'm playing the C major scale, for example, instead of playing ta 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 ta, or just what I'm going to get is ta ta ah ta ah ta ah ta ah, and you get something that sounds like this. This technique of tonguing on the upbeats and slurring on the downbeats will allow you to give your eighth note lines a little extra forward momentum and it will emphasize the upbeats that is characteristic of the sort of more syncopated swing feel. It also will give a smoothness to the lines without sacrificing rhythmic clarity and rhythmic accuracy and all of the beautiful things that come with being able to play with those rhythms in a jazz context, in particular in an improvisational context. All right, so how do you practice this? The best thing to do is to start with your scales. It's something that you're comfortable with, you already know, and we're gonna play the scale up to the ninth and back down in eighth notes. Now the ninth is the same as the second, so rather than just going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, now we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The benefit to that is it gives it a rhythmic approach that's gonna land you right back on the one if you're in four, four time. 
All right, and then as you go, the very first thing you do is you're gonna start the phrase with the tongue. Ta, 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 ah. After that first articulation, you're only gonna tongue the off beats, the up beats, and you're gonna slur the down beats. And it's gonna sound once again, something like this. In the beginning, it's not necessary to practice these exercises with the swing feel because depending on what tempo you're going to be playing later on, you may or may not want to emphasize the sort of underlying triplets that is often associated with swing. In the beginning, the, the most important thing is just to practice alternating between the tonguing and the slurring in those particular rhythmic approaches where you're tonguing the off beats and slurring the down beats. As you get more and more comfortable with that, you'll be able to apply it to the swing feel. Now, once again, I'll do an example. Now, this time I'm going to use the Mixolydian mode just for fun. As you get comfortable with it, you can start to swing it a little bit. Although, in practicing it, the most important thing again is really just to get the accents on the off beats. Ta 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 ta. In distinguishing between the slurring and the tonguing and really incorporating both of those into the lines, you're going to be able to smooth out those lines and maintain that kind of mm, beautiful rhythmic approach that you get in a music like jazz. Now again, the goal in the beginning is just to get comfortable alternating between single tonguing on the off beats and slurring on the down beats and really emphasizing those off beats in order to give it a, a little bit more of a forward momentum. Now what you're going to find as you practice this is this enables you to play longer eighth note lines and really create a fluid flowing sound while also being able to take advantage of the rhythmic approach that is so characteristic of jazz music. As with all the other tonguing exercises I do, I like to apply this to some of the other fundamental trumpet exercises that I've done in the past, including, for example, the Clark exercises. All right, as you get increasingly comfortable with the technique of alternating between tonguing on the off beats and slurring on the down beats, there are a couple of things that are unique to the style of jazz that I think are worth keeping in mind as you continue to practice these exercises. Number one, very often in jazz, we're dealing with a swing feel. One of my favorite feels of all time. Dare I say, my very favorite feel. And the thing about swing that you got to keep in mind is that it shifts its own nature depending on the tempo and the kind of quality and nature of the song that you're playing. So, for example, in a slow blues, you might find that the swing feel takes on a very triplet 12-8 kind of feel, whereas a much faster bebop tune may incorporate more straight eights. So, for example, if you were listening to Clifford Brown's beautiful solo on Cherokee, you'll notice that he's sticking to a little bit more of a straight eighth feel given how fast that music is. All that being said, those accents on the offbeat will give the music a very swing kind of propulsion, even if the eighth notes are technically a little bit straighter than what you would find in, let's say, a slow 12-8 kind of blues feel. The other thing you want to keep in mind is as improvisers, we're always trying to come up with new approaches to our melodic lines. And for that reason, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to articulation. You may find that in one phrase you can use this jazz articulation, and then in another phrase you may want to slur more, or you may want a single tongue, or even double tongue, or triple tongue. Now, depending on the nature of the circumstance, and depending on the way you want to shape your own individual sound, you can you know, take from many different approaches to articulation and apply them as you, as you perform, as you improvise, and as you play different kinds of written music. So I'm going to give a little example of ways that I can incorporate this jazz tongue into my playing. And uh, I think one thing that you'll find is very helpful is once you get a handle on that jazz tonguey technique, that's going to create a foundation from which you will be able to use all kinds of different approaches to tonguing to create beautiful music.
Also, as you continue to practice this, be sure to really listen in to the way that all of your musical heroes choose to articulate their phrases. Each individual musician has a particular approach to articulation, and you may find inspiration from just listening to the specific ways that each of your favorite trumpet players will choose to articulate their music. All right, gang, well, I hope that helps in your quest for jazz tugging excellence. Have a great time practicing this stuff. Enjoy yourself. Get into some really cool recordings. And I'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you found it useful or informative or just entertaining, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you've got any questions or if this video helped you out, or be sure to send it along to any of your trumpet playing friends. We're currently offering lessons online, and you can visit our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com. We're also offering lessons in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. Be sure to send us a message and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. You can also follow me, Bobby Spellman, on Instagram at, at Bob Spellman, on Facebook at Bobby Spellman Music, or on Twitter at Bobby Spellman for some more trumpet fun. <laughs> Lastly, if you found this video useful and you'd like to give a little donation to the cause, you can find us on Venmo at Ridgewood Music. All tips will go to the creation of more videos like this one and we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, gang. We'll see you on the next one, and happy practicing. Ta ta ah ta ah ta ah. What am I talking about? Uh.